Welcome to Excel and Business Math video number 17. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about fraction business math word problems. We'll see how to do two examples by hand and in Excel. And we'll get to see how to make sure when we're given something like 3 tenths of a penny, we can either write it in the unit cents or in dollars. All right, let's go look at our first example. I'm going to click on the sheet Word 1. Here's our first problem. An experiment done with 600 smokers was conducted to see if a particular stop smoking chewing gum could help people quit. After four months, two-thirds of the smokers were still smoking. Rounding to the nearest whole number, how many smokers in the experiment stopped smoking? Now, right off the bat, even before I list the facts, I'm going to list the goal. How many smokers in the experiment stopped smoking? Determine number of smokers in experiment who quit smoking. Now, let's list our facts. Now, it looks like we have 600 smokers. And since we're given a fraction here, that means a certain part of the original, that 600 is the whole or the total, and then There'll be two parts of that original total, the number who are still smoking and the number who stop smoking. So I'm going to list facts. Smokers in the experiment, that's the whole or the total, that's 600. Fraction of smokers still smoking, that's going to be part number one. And I want to enter that in a very particular way. We talked about this before. If we have certain fractions with many repeating decimals, it's much better to enter a formula like this because 2 thirds is as exact as we can get. It's more accurate than if we type 0.66. So we will Control Enter. And let's format this. And I'm going to use the built-in fractional number formatting since we have just a single digit in the top and bottom. Now the rest of this, it says rounding to the nearest whole number. I'm actually going to list that here as one of our facts. Round answer to the nearest whole number and remind ourselves that when we're rounding to the ones position, we use a zero. Now we can solve. Now there's actually a few different ways that we can solve this. One way is since we're given this part of smokers who didn't stop, and notice up here it reads two thirds of the smokers. Well, the smokers are the 600, two thirds, that's the part, and of. That means multiplying. So down here, I can calculate the actual number of smokers who did not stop smoking and tab. Now we can do a formula equals up arrow to get the actual total number of smokers times, that's the word of, up arrow to get our fraction of smokers who are still smoking. Control Enter, and there we get our part of the total. Now, the actual cell references pull that fractional number formatting. So with the cell selected, I'm going to go up and apply general. And I'm going to add some green there. Now, that's not the part we're after. We're after the other part. So now we can simply take, hey, all of them or the whole subtracted, the one still smoking, and we'll get number of smokers who did stop smoking. So ready equals up arrow to get the total minus those still smoking, control enter, there's our answer. 200 actually used the gum and quit smoking, at least after four months. I'm going to click that green. Now I want to check the answer. I can calculate smokers in experiment. These are the two parts. So when I add them up, Alt equals, highlight, I better get the same original 600. I could also do this a second way. I could actually calculate the fraction of smokers who stop smoking. Well, if 2 thirds is the fraction of people who are smoking, if I take 100% or 1 and subtract 2 thirds, I better get that fraction. So equals 1 minus this 2 thirds. And that number formatting will be pulled, Control Enter, and there it is, 1 third. And then I could check number of smokers who did Stop smoking equals one third times the original 600, Control Enter. It's got that number formatting, 
So I'm going to apply general. Now we can write our answer. And I actually am going to use that four months up here just to qualify the written statement. So there it is. After four months, 200 of the total 600 smokers stopped smoking. All right, let's go to our next sheet, Word 2. All right, this problem reads, the utility company says that the cost of operating a hair dryer is 3 tenths of a cent per minute. Notice that's the unit, so cent, so we're going to have to take 3 tenths of a cent. And remember, per means division. Find the cost of operating the hair dryer for 30 minutes. So really, the hard part is going to be making sure we get the correct number for cost per minute. And then we can multiply it by 30 minutes. We'll list the goal first. Find the total cost of running the hair dryer for 30 minutes. Now, I'm going to pull this drawing, this hand drawing I did over here. Because the trick is, is it's given as 3 tenths of a penny. So really, it's as if we took 3 tenths as a fraction and multiplied it by a penny. Well, how do we get 3 tenths to a decimal? Well, we do our division. How many tens are in 3? Well, uh, there's not a whole 10. So we put a decimal, putting the decimal up here and putting a 0. Then we ask how many tens are in 30? 3 making sure to list that 0. So 0.3, it's still as a cent, though. When we take that and multiply it by a whole penny, we're given in the units of pennies 0 0.3. But we could also say because one penny equals 0 0.01 with the unit dollar, we can make the calculations this way. 3 tenths, that's the fraction, times 0 0.01 dollars. Notice that's the hundredth position. So we could list it with the unit still there. 3 tenths times 1 over 100. We'll multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and we end up with, in dollars, 3 divided by 1,000. Of course, now we have a huge denominator. How many thousands are in 3? Well, we have to put our decimal repeat the zeros. And up here, decimal 0, 0. It's not until we list three zeros, 3,000, that we can get 1,000 to go into it. How many thousands are in 3,000? 3. We put it right there. So that's the amount of dollars right there with the unit. So notice that 3 tenths of a cent can be written as, still with the unit, cent, 0.3 cents, or changing the units. 0.003 dollars. All right, so listing our facts, cost of operating the hair dryer per minute, I'm actually going to try and write this with a cent unit. 3 divided by 10. And guess what? There is no number formatting for cent. So over to insert, over to symbol, symbol, and I'm going to try and find a cent. Now, the only place that I found cent was font equals Arial. And I had to scroll down, and there it is. I found cent. So when I find it, I click Insert. Now, I already had it listed as my recent, but when I click Close, there it is. Now, this is not a number. This is going to be text. We'll have to convert it to a number down in our calculation area. One penny listed in units of dollar. Well, I know how to do that. I'm going to type 0 0.01 and then come up to Home and apply Currency. Now I'm going to list the fraction. I listed fraction of a cent equals 3 divided by 10. That's the fraction they gave us. Now it comes up as 0.3. Excel was polite enough to convert it to a decimal for us. And so now we will create a label that says 3 tenths of a cent in dollar unit. So equals 3 tenths times our penny. So that's what it means. We're going to charge 0. That would be great. You could run your hair dryer and never get charged anything. That's number formatting. Currency by default shows two decimals. But this is a situation where we're going to increase the decimals because the actual charge is less than a single penny. And there it is.
Now we simply calculate total cost for running hair dryer for 30 minutes equals, there's the cost per minute times. And I'm going to arrow up to get 30 minutes. And it will take that proper unit right there and control enter. That's it, just nine pennies. I can blow dry my hair for 30 minutes, and it will only cost me nine pennies. Now we can check our answer. Let's look at this formula right here. Notice we took 30 minutes times 0 0.003. So I'm going to do the reverse and do division. I'm going to take whatever the answer is, 9 pennies, and divide it by 0 0.003, and I better get 30. So over here, I'll try to calculate total minutes equals. There's the answer divided by 3 tenths of a penny, Control-Enter. There's our check. I'm going to add some green. I'm also going to add some green over here also. Now, we could check this a different way. We actually could have taken a whole different approach. Up here, I could have written fraction of a penny and then done our 3 divided by 10 fraction, apply our fraction number formatting. And then down here, I can jump to the chase. Instead of converting it to dollars, I could have just said answer in pennies equals, and look at that, I got tricked by number formatting. Man, I'm lucky I caught that. But watch this. I'm going to take the 30 minutes times, and this formula will not be tricked by number formatting. It'll see the underlying number. Control-Enter. I'm definitely going to come up and apply general. Up here, Control-1, and I want fraction. And I'm going to look for, there's a tenth. Click OK. And now the answer is given in pennies. Check. Now we can write our answer in words. The total cost of running a hair dryer for 30 minutes is 9 pennies, either unit. All right, Enter. All right, that was a little fun with business math word problems and fractions. There's one, two, three homework problems for you to practice. And of course, if you like that video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including next video 18. That'll be the start of our percentages topic. All right, we'll see you next video.